unclean. But praise the Lord. Thank God for the blood of Christ. That we are not unclean. We are clean. Our righteousness is of the Lord. Our righteousness is of the Lord. Every one of us, unless you are not born again, but if you are born again, you have your own story. How you came to Christ. And if you are not born again, when we close, please see me. But if you are born again, then we were all unclean. But by the blood of Christ, we are who we are today. There is a story of how a desperate woman came to know Christ, came to the Lord. She had a desperate situation. And by the grace of God, she came to Christ. It was a painful situation. But God, at long last, gave her attention. That is why today, I believe he wants us to be steadfast and unmovable. No matter the challenge. Amen. Our main scripture for today is from Matthew 15, 21 through 28. This is a story of a Canaanite woman. It has to do with the Canaanite woman, Yeshua, the disciples, and this Canaanite woman's sick daughter. And Father, even as we come to you in the name of Christ, I thank you, Lord, that we are all secured in the blood. We are secured in the blood. And I declare the utmost fear free from any work of the evil one. I decree and declare in the name of Christ that we are the redeemed of the Lord. And we declare so. We take authority over every unclean spirit and we command it to take, get out of this place. We decree and declare that this place is sanctified in the name of Christ. But we give you praise that every child is secured in the blood. That every one of us are secured in the blood. That your word will come with power and authority in the name of Christ. Amen. So, we want to read the scripture. Christ left his jurisdiction and went to the area of Tyre and Sidon. Then Yeshua went to, out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. In actual fact, that's the upper part of, you know, towards Lebanon. It's upper part of Israel. So he left that area and went there. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, have mercy on me, O oh Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her, not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, send her away, for she, she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lordship of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped. He came and worshipped him saying, Lord, help me. 
But he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, yes, Lord. Yet, even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Yeshua answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that hour. Amen. This is an important story of a Canaanite woman. The Yeshua, his disciples, the people in that region, Tyre and Sidon, and the daughter, who the Bible says was severely demon possessed. Can you please take me back to the beginning of the test? So, Yeshua is in the region of Tyre and Sidon. This is a woman. She is a Gentile. This, I'm talking about Christ. A rabbi, a Jewish rabbi. In actual fact, up to date, if you are in Israel, uh, I know... I, I'm sorry, I need to acknowledge uh, those I invited by the grace of God are here. You are welcome. Uh, <laughs> yes, and I know uh, this two in front and those, those at the back, you are all welcome. Those who have lived in Israel before know that up to today, you cannot even shake those who are religious. In fact, Talking with you in public is even an issue. So this is a woman. This is a gentile. The one sick is also a girl. And she is not supposed to get near this man of God. This Jewish rabbi, as we all know. But she took the step because she had a desperate situation. Anybody desperate in a particular situation this morning, you have not missed it yet. No matter how desperate your situation is, Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Say amen. amen. So she took that step. Difficult as it was because she is desperate. And her, her time, she realized that this is a time that she can just get what she needs. She called Christ. The son of David, verse 22. He says, have Mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. When you take time and study son of David, you see that a lot of people desperate in de desperate situations use this name. Master, Lord, have mercy on me, son of David. And when the Bible says, when she spoke to Christ, it's not like he didn't hear. He heard her all right. The Bible says he answered her not a word. But then umeneo, when fino, Christ did not give her any attention. So a Canaanite woman, a woman, the daughter is sick. She's desperate. 
she comes to Christ. She tells Christ, please have mercy on me. What is the reason why she's asking for mercy? My daughter is severely, not just demon possessed, not just demon possessed, but severely demon possessed. This is a desperate woman. And spoke to Christ. And he did not give her any attention. Just imagine who this woman is. And what she's going through. The, the barriers she had to take. The guts she even had to, the, you know, master courage to go to meet Christ. Because she knows that she's a Gentile. She knows she's a woman. She knows he's her daughter. He's not a boy. But she had to break through because she needs help. You need something today? It is not your time to give up. So, Christ did not give her any attention. What is the reason for which Christ came? The Bible tells us he came to destroy the works of the devil. So if you and I, if I, were, I, was, I was this woman, or if you were this woman, what would you have done? Spoke to him. He didn't mind you. You, took, you made every effort. You shouldn't even go. And you spoke to him and he didn't mind you. So, obviously, you may step back. Maybe get angry. Or just leave the scene. But she, she pressed on. Trusting God to help. And the Bible says, when she told, my daughter is severely demon possessed, and God and Christ did not give her any attention. The next verse, please follow me. So, what happened? The disciples came. You have disciples. That were following me. You know, we are so privileged. We don't have to go through anybody to go to Christ. We are so privileged. We don't have to make a call and the call is not answered. We are so privileged. We don't have to go through secretaries to get to the master. We can wake up at any time and call him. Trusting him to answer. So, the disciples following said, Master, just tell her to go away. They urged Christ. What is the reason? She is crying after us. The cry, her cry is not important to the disciples. The pain that she is going through is not what concerns them. What concerns them is that there is noise behind them. They don't want to pay attention to the pain of the desperate woman. Your pain doesn't seem to be the pain of others. But you have somebody who can hear you. It doesn't matter what. There is somebody that can hear you. It may not bother those that you may think should stand with you and help you. The disciples, maybe we would think could, could just turn to the master and say, Master, you came to destroy the works of the devil. And this woman says her daughter is severely tormented by the devil. So please turn and take it, give her attention. Maybe you didn't hear her. She was speaking to you, so turn and help her. It wasn't what we would expect. They said, send her away. She's troublesome. She's crying. What is this? She's not even a, a part of us. It's only God who knows 
what they were thinking before they asked the master Christ to send this woman away. I love this woman. Let's see what happened. Before, when, after the disciples said, send her away, verse 23, verse, he said, but he answered and said, this is the first answer from Christ. I was not sent except to the lordship of the house of Israel. So Christ is telling this woman, you know what? It's not because of you kind of people like him. It's not. This is the master himself. When you read Genesis, let's look at it. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. We'll come back to this scripture, but let's... Look at Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So from the beginning, Genesis, when God started dealing with humanity and called Abraham, the blessing that God gives God says to Abraham, it is to all the families of the earth. It is to all the families of the earth. Please, let's go back to our main scripture. And so when Christ came, he came to call few people to follow him so that they will be able to reach out to the nations of the world. But in the beginning, when we go to Matthew 10, Matthew 10, verse 5 and 6, verses 5 and 6, when Christ began his work, he sent the disciples to among the, the, the Israelites. He said, these 12 Yeshua sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter the city of Samaria, the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So, from the very beginning, the blessing is for everybody, all the families of the earth. But when Christ came and started, hallelujah, when he started the ministry, he called few and asked them to go to the house of Israel. When you are starting a business or it doesn't matter what you want, you will start small with a few people at a small place. As time goes, then you continue to expand until you reach wherever God wants you to reach. In the same way, Christ came to fulfill every word of God for all the families of the earth. But in, in, when he started, it has to start with few. In fact, the Bible says his own family did not believe in him. His own brothers did not believe in him. We can look at it from, Matt, uh, from John chapter 7. John chapter 7 from verse 1 to 5. The Bible says his own brothers did not believe in him. Please go to verse 5, uh, John chapter 7 verse 5. Let, let's go to verse 5 for the sake of time. For even his brothers did not believe in him. So Christ cannot just get up and begin uh, doing ministry in the whole world. He had to start somewhere. So he called the 12, asked them to just go to, just to the lordship of the Israelites. But after he died and rose, he said in Acts 1.8, start from Jerusalem to Judea, to Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the world. Even then, it has to be from the beginning, Jerusalem, then to the region, then to the Samaria, that is the other regions, and then to the uttermost part of the world. So Christ came 
for the whole world, but he had to start from somewhere. So don't look at the first scriptures and think he was not concerned with Gentiles. He had to start from somewhere. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So when he, he, the woman, let's go back to our scripture, verse 24 and 25, uh, Matthew 15. That's our main scripture for the day. So Matthew 15, 24, okay. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the Lord's sheep of the house of Israel. So I believe this scripture is clear now. It's not like he didn't come for all of us, but he had to start from the beginning, for, from a point. Because later on, he affirmed the Genesis uh, uh, 12, 3, to the, all the families of the earth. But he answered the, uh, uh, the next verse, please. Then she, she came and worshipped. <laughs> what did you, this woman do? This is a gentile. First, a woman, the daughter sick. Christ did not mind her. The disciples say, send her away. Can you imagine the stages of things she is already going through? But after Christ said, I did not come for everybody, she, then the Bible says, then she came and worshipped him saying, Lord, help me. She was desperate. It doesn't matter what the woman was, what was hearing, whether from Christ himself or from the disciples or the surroundings or the issues around. All she knows is that she needs help and she is not going to give up. She must get what she wants. She is steadfast. She is not moved by the circumstances around her. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says, Karabasoko Tolobora. So the Bible says, but he answered and said, Christ is the one speaking, uh, uh, the, the narrator is talking about it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs this is what christ said to the woman what belongs to the children should not be thrown to the little dogs so if it were you if it were you. You have moved. You have taken every step possible, trying to break every barrier. And now the master himself is saying, what must be given to my children or the children? It is not good to throw it to little dogs. Who are the little dogs here? Maybe at this stage, most of us would have given up. Um, so the word of God says, Jesus answered her and said, that which is for the children should not be given to little dogs. And the woman said, yes. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. What a woman. Can you imagine that? When Christ told her, that which is for cho the children should not be given to little dogs. I believe almost every one of us would have said enough. If you will not heal me, should you insult me? Am I, am I a dog? How can my child be a dog? How can you refer to my child as a majority of us? I doubt if there will be one person who will continue steadfastly to receive this blessing. But she didn't give up. What is God telling you today? Is it business? Is it about your child? Is it about your marriage? What exactly is the challenge? Whatever it is, 
it is not time to give up. Whatever that challenge, it is not time to give up. The Bible says she said, yes, Lord, yes. Yes. Even if I am a dog or my child is a dog, it does not matter. The little crumbs, the crumbs that fall from the master's table, the dogs can eat. The dogs can eat. So it does not matter what you hear. Be steadfast. It does not matter who tries to prevent you from attaining what God wants you to attain. Be steadfast. Don't be moved. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, Christ said. Then Yeshua answered and said to her. Oh, woman. Woman. Oh, woman. Oh, woman. What a woman. Great is your faith. Hallelujah. It is my prayer that God will give us faith. To press on. Let it be to you as you desire. Don't give up. So far as you are convinced there is something in there for you. And God wants you receiving it. You know, this is even a gentle woman. She's just taking a step of faith. But she knew of Christ. Son of David, she had an idea of this man who is healing and helping. And so she is not going to give up no matter what comes her way. She is not giving up because she knows that this son of David, she has heard about him. And so the moment she heard that this man is around tired, she you know, said, what? Today this demon, you cannot remain in my child. And I am not going to allow anything to stand in my way for this demon to continue to remain in my child. And the Bible says that child was severely demon-possessed. Not just demon-possessed. So God said, great is your faith. Let it be done to you as you desire. And the Bible says, and her daughter was healed from that very hour. That very hour. Can you imagine that this lady got angry when Christ said, you know, she's passed through all the barriers as a woman, as a, 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 a Gentile, as a, you know, uh, the first Christ did not mind her. Then the disciples said, send her away. Then Christ said, it's not because of you I came. Then he said, you, uh, what is for my children? Children should not be given to dogs at this point. Can you imagine if she had said enough and left? She would have missed her miracle. The child would have remained demon possessed after all her efforts after all her efforts the child would have remained demon possessed but praise God the word of God tells us and her daughter was healed from that very hour. This morning, we are going to pray. The Bible says, Christ said, men ought always to pray and not faint, not lose heart. If there is a mountain before you, use it as a stepping stone and go forward. If there are people that are trying to distract you, don't give them attention. The woman did not mind the disciples. She did not give any attention to the disciples. She still cried unto God. 
she still cried unto God. She still cried unto God. This morning, let me tell you, if you are a child, you are going to be meeting all kinds of situations that will try to dissuade you from living for the Lord. From attaining what God wants you to attain. And it doesn't matter even your age. Whether you are a man, a woman, an adult. We are in a society now that you have to be steadfast and unmovable and be grounded on the word of God. Not giving up. Trusting God will help us to attain that which he has for you and for each one of us. The, those around you can mock you. Maybe you are a student. Your teachers may even say things that goes against your faith. In actual fact, I remember I was in a, a, a seminary. And the president of the seminary started speaking again, speaking in tongues in class. This is a, the president of the whole place. And I started, you know, you, we, we don't have to give attention to people who are distracting us. I got angry. And then as I was thinking of, and the Holy Spirit told me, Evelyn, he is the president of the school. So, okay. So what next? And so I believe the Holy Spirit asked me to sign up. I signed up. I saw him twice. In fact, there was a time the whole staff were waiting for him and I was having a meeting with them concerning this issue. There will be people who will dissuade you. They will speak against what you believe. You don't give up. The world in which we are now is serious. I mean, serious. The things you think are true and we are watching on the media will may completely be the opposite. But we have to trust God. That is why we must know God for ourselves. This woman will not give up because she knows I, I need this situation to be taken care of. It must be taken care of. You are not giving up until you attain that which you know must come to you. Hallelujah. For the sake of time, I am going to end, but we are going to pray. Like I said, Christ said, men ought always to pray and not give up, not faint, not lose hearts. It is necessary to keep pressing on until we attain what we need to attain. And, and Paul said, be steadfast, be unmovable, always abounding in the things of God. Because your labor in the Lord will not be in vain. If you are working in the house of the Lord, doing things for God and you think it's in vain, it will not, never go in vain. Do, let's do everything as unto the Lord. Because it's the Lord that will reward you. Say amen.